Well, one issue that isn't slipping away from the media's attention is that at the election, we've seen now the lowest number of female Liberal MPs in the Parliament since 1993. This statistic has motivated some high-profile women in Canberra, like former Defence Minister Linda Reynolds, to call for a quick fix. She's talking about uh, the idea of temporary quotas. The second issue is we have to take action within the Liberal Party because we need more women in actively engaged and having their voices heard within uh, the party organisation. We need more women uh, to put their hands up and to be elected to uh, office-bearing positions in the party. And we need many more women being pre-selected. Joining me now, Senator Jane Hume, the Shadow Minister for Finance and a member of the two-person panel that's reviewing why the Liberal Party lost the federal election to be co-authored with uh, former party official Brian Lochnane. Jane, thank you for your time. This is an issue that keeps coming back because the Liberal Party's uh, female representation numbers, they ebb and flow, but at the moment you're in a bit of a low point. Quotas versus targets, what's your view and why? Well, I think the most important thing is to, first of all, understand that an election loss always changes the dynamic within a parliament. And the Liberal Party has come a long way, even in just the last few years. Had we have held the seats that we lost in places like Pearce and Swan and Chisholm and Reid, uh, we would have those traditional sort of marginals we still would have maintained a decent number of women uh, in Parliament. Uh, had we have kept those seats that are traditionally safe, like Higgins and Curtin, mm -hmm. well, then we would have done even better. Had we had won seats, seats like Lyons, for instance, Patterson, Shortland, Dunkley, Karangamite, uh, you know, we actually would have improved the number of women in the Liberal ranks. But an election loss like the one we've experienced does change things up. Now, we know that the conversation between quotas and targets has been going on for some time. Mm -hmm. Quotas is an interesting, uh, is an interesting uh, method. It certainly changes the numbers, but does it change the culture within the party? I think that targets are probably a better option, but they must be targets that are actually achievable and fulfillable, and they have to have some momentum behind them from leadership. But in the Liberal Party, and let's face it, you know this, uh, people tend to join the Liberal Party because they don't like being told what to do, you mm -hmm. know? They don't like uh, overbearing large governments. They don't like having uh, punitive taxes. They don't like red tape. That tends to be why people join the party in the first place. They don't take well to directives. They're OK with direction from leadership. Mm -hmm. That's really important. Mm -hmm. But not directives. And quotas would be a directive. So I think that they sit uncomfortably. It, it, it divides the choice on, on gender lines. Um, I'm opposed to the voice, the Indigenous voice of the parliament because I think it divides Australians on racial lines. I have the same um, dislike of dividing us uh, in any way. But that, that catalogue of members that you talked about and candidates, it'd be interesting to see if you judge the Liberal Party on what you took to the election in terms of that gender split, uh, you'd be probably in good shape. But exactly. clearly, when people went to fill out their ballot paper, they were not voting for women just because they were w women, they were voting for policies, and that's where I think you fell short. No, yeah. I think you're right. We do need to reframe the debate that we're having. I saw some, a statistic recently that suggested that fewer than one in four Australian women between the ages of 18 and 35 voted Liberal. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that speaks volumes because the Liberal Party, if you're a Liberal um, parliamentarian or a Liberal Party member, you know that the reason you are there is to improve the country for the next generation. But if women that are part of that next generation aren't seeing that message, aren't hearing that message, or, you know, they're not buying what it is that we're selling, well, then it is time but for a so, rethink. That, that's an important point. There's a thing called the Australian Electoral Study. It's done by Pro uh, Professor McAllister at the ANU. It's been going for now 35 years. The Liberal Party has never fallen below 40% until, and it was 40% under John Howard, who wasn't considered popular with women. It was 40% uh, and above with Tony Abbott again, who everyone said had a women's problem. It dropped under 40% with Malcolm Turnbull. And he was supposedly popular with women. I think there's a broader issue of why the vote's moving away from women. Uh, Linda Reynolds again today when she did media uh, was arguing that a lot of these teals should have been Liberal women. Now, let's have a listen. That 14 of our 18 seats, so 14, as you said, of our 18 seats 
were won by women. And many of those women, particularly some of the Teals, should have been Liberal candidates, but they were not. She makes the point that these Teals should have been Liberal candidates. I argue not when you look at the policy, policies that they were putting out. Again, it's the substance of what you take to the election, not who's just pushing the message, surely. Well, it is, certainly. But at the same time, we don't want to end up in the electoral wilderness for forever and a day. And if we miss out on this large cohort of the Australian population, if what it is that we're selling they're not buying, mm. well, then I think we have to rethink what it is that we're selling or but how we're selling it. do you think that's the message, it? not the messenger? Like it is both. Yeah. It is both. Very oh. much so. And I do think who delivers that message is really important too. So why did Celia Hammond lose? Why did Fiona Martin lose? Why do all these women lose? That's your message. You've got your female messenger, but you had a crap message. Well, I don't necessarily think that it was the female messenger that those people were listening to. It might have been a, a more, um, you know, a leadership issue as opposed to um, a, the deliverer, you know, the local issue. And, you know, people vote for different, really, differently for very different reasons. The important issue now, though, mm. is how do we create an increasingly diverse Liberal Party? Because we know that when there are more diverse voices around the table, that better decisions get made. That's the wisdom of crowds theory. And also how do we better reflect the people that we want to represent? Because really that's how we maintain that electoral imperative to keep voting Liberal. We know that more people vote Liberal than any other party, which is terrific. That is true. Which is terrific. Even on the, on the last results. That's last, exactly yes, right. Yes. But we have to maintain our relevance, not just for those older generations, but for those younger generations coming through. Now, how do we do it? If I had that answer, you know, I think make a million dollars. If, if I can be um, bold here, Jane, I think one of the problems you had, you had a lot of senior women in Cabinet. Uh, Prime Minister Morrison used to crow about the number of women in Cabinet. But most people out there in Voterland couldn't pick you out in the lineup. You, at least, were out of the media fray, very often arguing the case against the Labor Party. But your senior women like Maurice Payne and others missing in action. So do you think now with Susan Lee you're going to have a stronger uh, female injection into the national debate? I think Susan Lee is fantastic. She's already beginning to demonstrate that she is stepping up uh, to take that leadership role very, very seriously, not just on behalf of Liberal women, mm -hmm. but on behalf of all women and all Liberals, which I think is really important. And she's been out there today making some really important points, but she's also out there in policy as well. It's not just about women. What I think what upsets me most is a lot of the conversation about Liberal women is by Liberal women. We need to have more Liberals broadly that make that that make the case. And, you know, we are a grassroots organisation. When it's an authoritarian structure, quotas are fantastic. But when it's a grassroots structure like the Liberal Party, mm -hmm. we really need it to be that grassroots groundswell mm -hmm. that creates that change. If you want more women at the top, it has to come from the bottom. And it's up to leaders like Susan Lee, like myself, like the other women in Shadow Cabinet to help make the case for that change. All right, we'll see what happens. Jane Hume, thank you.